Hi beloveds, it's Karuna here and welcome to the channel. If you're interested in my newsletter or interested in inquiring about private sessions, please be in touch. My contact information is in the text below this video. Today we're going to look at the controlling parent. Let's first define a controlling parent. A controlling parent is or was a parent or a grandparent or a caregiver that was more interested in controlling you than helping you develop your unique soul identity. The controlling parent was one that saw you as an extension of him or herself and therefore tried to control your actions in the world, including your interests. The controlling parent is not supportive of the development of an individual identity, and this is problematic. So we're gonna break this video down into two sections. The first section, we'll look at the strategies of the controlling parent, and in the final section, we'll look at ways that we can treat with those strategies. How can we deal with them, heal from them, and integrate this toxic action that came or is coming our way. The first strategy used by a controlling parent is that of force. They will be forceful with their words. They will be grandiose in their body gestures. And indeed, they can be physically forceful. With their words, they will often be dominant, they will be manipulative, and they will be very clear that they know and you do not. They are in charge, they are the authority, and you don't have any say in this. They'll find ways to make your point of view not valid. But anything that they support or they want to do or their interests, as long as you're on for the ride, the controlling parent is all good for that. So the first strategy is forceful words, grandiose posturing that can also spin out of control into physical force. The second strategy used by a controlling parent is that of manipulation and undercutting your interests. So let's say you're a little kid and you came home from school and you were excited about something new that you had learned and you wanted to participate in it, but your caregiver wasn't so interested in that. They didn't think it was such a good idea. They will start to lay out the reasons why you shouldn't participate or they won't financially support that extracurricular activity. Whatever it is, they will start to undermine, undercut your interest in this. Now this is very damaging. The reason being, when we discover something that is soul evoking, that is soul expanding, we're enthusiastic, we wanna share this, especially with people that are supposed to love us. So we'll come home very excited about something and then it's the big wah, wah, when the controlling parent undermines that interest. That's the feeling of depression, and it's the feeling of the soul shutting down. So as a little kid, you may have come home very excited, but the controlling parent will try to undermine, and the soul gets dampened, the soul gets shut down. We can even lose hope. Strategy number three used by the controlling parent is the silent treatment. Now this often comes into play when you're a bit older. When you're young, the controlling parent can often use verbal force, this grandiose posturing, they know better and you don't. And then in this next wave of development, as you get older, you're not quite buying the line too much and you are seeking to establish your identity so they might start to undermine. As we age, let's say you're gonna leave the house. Let's say you're transitioning from high school to university. For controlling parent, this is a devastating transition because they're losing control of that being, i.e. the child, in their house. So the words might be heightened before you go off to university. The words that just stab to your heart, you never forget those awful words. And then inevitably, of course, we'll leave. At some point we leave. At that point, it can turn to the silent treatment. In the silent treatment, let's say you go out in your world you're at university or you're starting your career and, and you're establishing yourself. You're finding your genuine baseline. You're out of that old environment and you, you are establishing or have established who you are. The controlling parent will take this as an affront and they might try their old strategies of undercutting you, cutting words, 
you'll share something you're excited about and in comes the big wah wah or when you're sharing your accomplishments or what you're interested in in a group gathering they'll be the one that 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 are just they're silent they're stone-faced and silent and you know underneath they're seething because they take your growth personally these are the three strategies that are used by a controlling parent. Now, if you live with or have had a controlling parent and are no longer living with a controlling parent, we want to know how to treat with their actions. These are misaligned actions. They are toxic actions. We want to know how to treat with them in, the, in an empowered way. If you are still living with the controlling parent, get educated. Learn about the strategies of the controlling parent as you're doing on this video and continue to observe their actions from there. Know that they do take things personally. It is not a reflection of you. It is a reflection of their own pain, their own toxicity, and the trauma that they have experienced in their own life. So take a big step back Get educated, start to observe so you don't get hooked. When you don't get hooked, that cycle with the controlling parent can't be fed. You're observing, you're watching, you're not biting the bait anymore, and you're not feeding that toxic circle. You can remove yourself from the toxic circle and better watch it and <laughs> watch the toxic parents spin out because they will. And if, the, if, it gets, if they get too spun out because you're not biting the bait anymore, you have every right, every right to get up and say, I'm going to go now. And you go out for a walk or you get in a car and you go somewhere else or you stay overnight with friends. You go anywhere, anywhere, but where the toxic parent has been repetitively spewing stuff. As people who value love and inclusivity, we will have a tendency to go back time and time again and watch the repetitive behavior of the controlling parent. It is disrespectful, highly disrespectful, and this is toxic. The reason it's toxic is when there is disrespect, consciousness awareness cannot grow. Instead, sadness, manipulation, domination, lower energies are the predominant energies. When you're in a respectful environment, with others, consciousness, awareness, intelligence grows. So what I'm saying here is if you've been in a consistently disrespectful environment, you've observed the repetitive pattern over a period of time, at some point you use your intelligence and you get out. Where do you go? Anywhere except where the disrespect is located. Anywhere else. Strategy number two, let's say you're no longer living with a toxic parent and you're visiting occasionally. Maybe it's weekly visits, maybe it's monthly visits, maybe it's quarter, quarter holiday visits. When the toxic controlling parent starts to go back to his or her own tendencies, you can try to redirect the topic, redirect it into something more positive. If that doesn't work, again, you can get up and remove yourself from the situation and go talk to other people, right? There's different ways to treat with this. Also, you can simply say, you know, those words, they hurt me. They're hurtful. I feel pain when you share those words and I can see that you're in pain. Whoa, now, not every parent's going to be able to hear that. Some will some will be able to hear it. And if you can possibly start to break open a conversation, I encourage you to do it, but you have to be very careful and very selective of how you go about that because if it doesn't work out, they're gonna turn back and blame you even more. Strategy number three with the controlling parent is compassion, love, and respect. If you have stabilized enough in yourself, and you have to be very honest with yourself in this assessment, if you have stabilized in your, in, on the inside enough in yourself where you feel like you can go back into this environment while being present, while being stabilized with your inner knowing, by, while being stabilized with your inner teacher, then there's the possibility of going back with compassion, respect, and love. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I have 
some people that I work with where that approach does work. There's an opening that occurs somehow often through pain, a death in the family, illness in the family. There's the little crack where light can get in and amazing things can happen. But you've got to be the one that's stabilized in compassion and love. You are unshakable in that knowing. There are also times when it doesn't work out. And that was the case in my family. I went back with this knowledge that we are we have and are gaining on this channel. I went back with kindness, with respect, and with love. And guess what? The kinder I became, the more hatred um, was sent my way. And it just is how it is. It just rolls how it rolls. I can't predict that for you. Only you and your family dynamics can determine the outcome. But don't go back with outcomes. See if you can go back stabilized in respect, compassion, and love and just see where it leads. Another way to treat with a controlling parent is to limit contact or go no contact. This is a very personal choice. And each of us want to gaze inside deeply to know that this choice is unique to each of us. No one convinces you of this one. It's about you looking inside and knowing what works for you and the circumstances that you're in. In my case, I looked at the situation and I looked at it from all different angles, really 360 degree angles. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And I knew that this was a pivotal decision. I moved away, physically moved away from the environment, but then also I would limit contact to certain times of year, certain trips, just enough, and then I would leave. I also chose not to stay at the primary family home. There was another place I could stay, so we would stay there and then go out and visit my family in measured doses that I knew was just right for us. So we'd go and we'd have that limited contact. In my case, the kinder I became and the more I limited contact, instead of playing into the fiefdom, instead of playing into the party line, there was more resentment. And at that point, because the disrespect continued on, at that point I used my intelligence and got out and I went no contact. I am not saying that that is what you need to do. These are very personal decisions, but a controlling parent, a controlling environment steals your soul. It steals your self-identity. It is something to look at very carefully and it's something to navigate through very carefully. A controlling parent is a toxic parent. Why? Because they do not honor our basic desire for freedom. That's a base desire. And you are a sovereign soul with your own interests, your own identity, your own skills. Because the controlling parent does not honor you as a sovereign, free individual, it can be very depleting. We can develop low self-identity and indeed depression can follow. I hope this video is helpful. Please leave your experiences in the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you very soon.